Good morning Legitimates and welcome back to my channel. Today I am releasing my new bag Temptress. Uh, it is a, uh, what is it, a, bar a barrel bag with a really fun little pocket on the front here. Uh, this front panel is the perfect size for a 5 by 7 embroidery. It's got bag feet, it's got a removable strap with like a funky strap connector. And then on the inside, we have a zipper pocket. We have a little attachment for your keys. And then on the other pocket, or on the other wall, we have a pocket that I have designed for sunglasses. So I even put like a little layer of fleece on the inside for that. So if you would like to see how to make this bag, please stay tuned. We're going to start with the strap. Um, so my strap is going to be one and a half inches thick. So I'm going to measure three quarters of an inch in from each side and rule a line. And this is just, it's going to help. You need to trust me on that. The center line won't help you as much as these ones will. Uh, but you can draw a center line and then line it up that way if you prefer. This is twice as much marking, but it will make life much simpler. So I'm just... And you can do this for any size strap. You've just got to change the measurements. So what I'm doing is basically I'm marking where the fabric's going to sit. Uh, but these lines double as another thing in a minute as well. So it's just, it's worth doing. All right. So now you can either get fabric glue or I'm just going to use double side tape because I don't really have time for it to dry. And I'm just going to put it just inside the lines that we drew on each side. And this is going to hold our fabric in place. Now the reason I'm going to do two lines and not one is because it's more likely to move and buckle if I just do a single line down the center. But if you've got um, some glue, you could definitely glue the fabric down in the middle first. And then you use less double-sided tape. Alright. So I'm just going to peel off both sections, but just a little bit. Like that, so it's out of the way. And then I'm going to grab my strap and tuck under the raw edge so that we won't have a raw edge on our strap. And then I'm going to line up that folded edge with the edge of the vinyl and then just stick it onto the double sided tape. So I'm just going to do this in sections because I always find it easier in sections. You don't want to stretch the fabric, that's why I'm patting it. You can see me patting it instead of pulling it and smoothing it like that. So this, the way that I do this strap does take a lot of double-sided tape, but it is very pretty. And so again, we're just going to keep moving down the strap. Now, depending on your width of fabric, you may need to cut two pieces and join them together to get the full length. Um, mine is 150. So I'm alright. So my fabric, as you can see, goes past, but that's good. I'm just going to take some scissors and snip it just a little bit past so that I can tuck under the raw edge on this end as well because I don't want any raw edges showing. So like that. And the double-sided tape will hold the, the curve under. So that's that bit done. Now it's a matter of a lot of clipping. So first you're going to fold the edge of the vinyl up to the fabric like this and then you're going to fold it over again and clip it in place. Now I'm going to do one side and clip it and then come back and do the other side because it does take quite a lot of clips so that it won't shift. Now if you wanted to you could just have folded it, you could make it smaller and just fold it but then you'd see the raw edge of the vinyl. So this is tucking it under, and it's also giving more strength to your vinyl. So this is 
why I chose to do it like this. This is a very strong strap um, and it fits in my hardware beautifully. Sometimes if you make straps too thin, they can slide and adjust themselves too easily. Uh, but this works out really nicely. So we go up to the fabric and then fold over. And that's why we wanted to make sure that that fabric was perfectly centered. Um, otherwise one side would be thicker than the other with the folding. So as you can see, I'm using a lot of clips to hold it in place. Uh, you could also, if you wanted to, use double-sided tape. Although because we're double folding it, I don't know how strong that would be, which is why I use the clip method. So this strap does take a little while to make, uh, but I love it and I think it's worth it. So I'm just going to continue clipping to fold it to the edge and then over. And you'll notice that I'm not getting any buckling in my fabric because the double-sided tape is doing its job and holding it in place. Uh, so if you use fabric glue, you'll want to wait till it dries so that it won't shift on you. Otherwise, you'll get ripples in your thing. And trust me, I have done that. That's why I now use two strips of double-sided tape. Otherwise, it does tend to shift on you. So up to the line and over. And you'll notice I'm going up a little bit and then I can just come back and tuck that in because the fold here helps it to fold back there. Doing it right next to each other sometimes isn't the most helpful way. So I'm going to jump probably, what is it, three inches and then go here. And then you can just shove this underneath and it kind of tucks itself. Which I find a little bit quicker. So again, over, clip, and then just grab that bit and tuck it under and add two more clips. There's approximately one clip per inch or thereabouts. It's not perfect. It's just, it's whatever you're comfortable with, really. If you want more clips or less clips, or if you want to glue this down with like liquid concrete cement stuff, you're welcome to do so, but just remember we are going to stitch through this. So we're folding it up. We're getting more clips. I am nearly to the end, as you can see. So that's exciting. Up and under. And you should be getting a nice, even um, fold. So now I'm going to come all the way to the other end. And then to there, and then I'll put another clip in between so it doesn't shift, and then up. So yes, this does take a little while, but all the good stuff does. Alright, so that's enough clips, I am happy with that. So now I'm going to go up to a four stitch length, and I'm using my rainbow thread just because I think it's going to look extra fabulous. So I'm going to stitch two holes and then go back into the first one to lock those stitches in. And then I'm going to stitch one eighth of an inch from this edge here. So I'm not in a hurry. If you do it slow and steady, you can actually pull your clips off as you go. Now, if you've used a really thick vinyl, what you might want to do is do a second line of stitching, uh, an eighth of an inch from the outside edge, just to really help push that down if your vinyl is too thick. This one's fine, so I don't need to do that, um, but it is just something to be mindful of. If yours is not sitting flat and nice, um, just run a second line of stitching. It will also look pretty, so it wouldn't hurt to do it. Clean up the clips as you go because it's always nice to have a clean workspace. And then when we get to the end, we're going to back stitch and then run off the edge. And so now 
you've got no raw edge this is a nice strong um, strap and then the back still looks fabulous so now we're going to just do the other side exactly the same as what we just did so up fold clip and we go to the edge of the fabric and that way because your fabric needs to be the end result width of your strap so if you're doing this in a different size that's what the name of the game is fold it over clip it down and then move to the next section so I know it's already taken 10 minutes and we're only halfway through the strap but I still think it's worth it You don't have to make this strap for this bag. You can literally make any one. I'm just trying to be more diverse with different types of straps for you. Uh, if you have an embroidery machine as well, what you could do is you could have the fabric, like a plain color fabric and embroider along the strap. That also would be very cool. You could use actual strapping and then coat it with the vinyl millions of options with this uh, but I didn't interface the fabric because I didn't want it too thick this takes practice but you do get faster at it I also like to throw my clips because sometimes I like a little bit of chaos. So up and over. You can even finger press it down. It does help. There to there. got a little bit to go now and then we're going to do the same thing if you've got enough clips you can clip both the sides but just keep in mind it does get quite heavy with that many clips attached to it which is why I'm showing you this way also you may not own 200 clips like I do If you are going to glue this down, please make sure your glue is dry before you top stitch it. So you may want to do this, glue it, and then set it aside till the end, just so that you don't get glue on your needle or in your machine. Because that can definitely blow up a machine. I'm also going to trim off these tails, throw them in the bin. over and up clip 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 and then the end there's no right or wrong way to do this you do it however you want okay so I'm going to have the I'm going to start at the other end because I will always want the bulk of my strap outside of my machine I find that personally easier so we're going to stab it in Manually crank it a hole and then go back through the first hole. That's going to lock it in. And then I'm going to top stitch an eighth of an inch from the inner edge of the vinyl. And I'm going to clean up my clips as I go. It also helps to have this straight and falling straight down. Um, it will help prevent um, kinks and curves. If you're feeding your strap in straight, you're more likely to get straight stitches. Also keep an eye on your bobbin thread. I have wound three bobbins for this project. I'm pretty sure that I need three. It 
you're just going to continue down. I'm starting to get a mess of clips which are actually annoying me. But slow and steady does win the race. And I'm to the end now. Hold that in place and back stitch. And so now the strap is done. Except for the hardware part. So I'm gonna put all my clips back into the container. And as usual, I have dropped one on the floor. Wouldn't be a Tory video without it. Okay. I'm using rainbow hardware and rainbow thread just because I feel like it goes with the bag. I am going to attempt to get rainbow thread in again for everyone. I can't promise it, but I am going to try. So we're going to take our strap adjuster and we're going to go up, down, and through. So the, the, the vinyl is going around that middle center pole. And then I'm going to do my crisscross because it is strong. The other option is, is you could put rivets if you wanted to. Uh, so I'm going to stitch here and I'm going to go backwards first because straps like this tend to shift. So I have personally found that starting in and going backwards before you go forwards helps prevent it from shifting and being crooked. Oh, and I just broke my thread. It's not at all what I was hoping for. That was probably just a weak spot in the thread. It does happen sometimes. I'm going to pull this all the way out though so that the back bobbin doesn't have a weird ugly loop. Trim them off. And I'll just go back up to this top corner. Crank. Manually crank. Go back through the first hole and try again. Needle down. Pivot to go along the bottom. Needle down, and then we're going to go diagonally up. This just gives you some extra firm hold. And that was the end of that bobbin, so that worked out perfectly. This wasn't a totally full bobbin when I started, um, but doing the strap this way does take a lot of thread, so just keep that in mind. And I just knotted that. Whoops. Now, if you have rainbow thread and you're trying to conserve it, you don't need to use uh, rainbow bobbin for the whole bag. Um, but definitely the straps and the binding because they're the parts you will see. Alright, so we're going to go up and we're going to put the flat part against the all vinyl side. And then I'm going to go up one side of the strap adjuster, back down the other, and then over this and fold it over. And then I'm thinking to hide the fact that I'm going to do this. I'm actually going to line this up. This is something completely new that I've just come up with. So this is not the pattern. Normally I would do my crisscross, but I'm actually going to stitch up along the threads that we've already done so that it's invisible. I think it's quite clever. So now you can't actually see where I've stitched it. So I'm just stitching along the stitching again. Uh, and even the back looks good. So again, you don't have to do this. I have literally come up with it as I'm doing this video. Uh, because my brain can never stop thinking, apparently. I'm going to get as close to the um, metal as you can. I've backstitched so everything's nice and locked in and that is not going anywhere and it looks like it's floating. That's really fun. I'm glad I just come up with that. Right. So that is your strap done. So we can set that aside now. We don't need that until we construct the bag at the end. So next up, we're going to do our arm handles. Now you can skip these if you don't want to have handles on your bag. 
and you just want a shoulder strap, alternately you can skip the shoulder strap and just have the arms. So I'm putting this in the center. Oh, actually, no, we're not doing that. We're gonna put this on the edge. Edge, not center. That was my bad. Because we're doing rolled handles, you don't want the very, very center to be too thick. So we're gonna leave a gap. So we need to do it on the side like this, not in the center. I did think it felt weird. So I'm going to go down the end. Luckily for me, I hadn't pushed it down yet, so it's quite easy to lift off. Sometimes double-sided tape can, in fact, be your friend. All right, so we're also going to take a pen and a ruler, and we're going to draw a line in the center so that we can see where it is. And then same with this one. And the reason I'm doing all the straps in this order is because I just ran out of bobbin thread. If I hadn't have run out of bobbin thread, I probably would have done um, the side connectors until the bobbin runs out because I, I would prefer not to have joins on the handles. All right, so we're going to peel off the backing of one side and we're going to fold it up and just leave like, I guess that's an eighth of an inch gap, just a little one. We actually don't want them touching this time, which I know is different to what I usually tell you. So we've got just a little bit of a gap. And we're gonna do the same to the other side, and this will help it to fold over in a minute. So I'm leaving the same amount of gap on this side we still want it to be like even. We just want an even gap. So let's do that to this one as well. That end of the double-sided tape backing doesn't want to come off. Sometimes it can be a bit stubborn. Always just try the other end next. Otherwise you can rub on it and um, a little bit of friction will heat it up and help it to stick. So I'm just folding this over and you'll notice I'm pushing down. I'm not pulling on anything. I don't want to stretch the vinyl out of shape. So like that, and then we're going to fold it in half and you'll notice that this folds in half really easily. And then we're going to use double-sided, uh, not double-sided tape, we're going to use clips. You can use double-sided tape if you want to, um, but I find, for me, clips are going to work just fine. And it folds nice and it sits nice and flat because of that little gap. So if you need to make, um, if you want to make handles like this without the rolled part, you could actually just stitch all the way around this. But you'll notice that it's it's folding really nicely and that's what we want and you can make these handles in any length I picked the length I picked because I wanted it to sit like here when I carry it so these are not shoulder length but I think about 30 inches should be good for shoulder length if that's what you would prefer all right we're going to do the same again you want to make sure all your clips are facing the right way because when I'm top stitching I, I like to get a flow and pull them off as it's moving. And they are easy to pull off with the right side facing up. So I'm just clipping along and making sure that's nice and even, that's why I'm using lots of clips. You don't really want one side to stick out more than the other. You want to try and get it as even as you can. Which again is why that gap really helps. So now we've got long straps like this. We want to take an erasable something. 
So I'm going to use my Chaco pen because I love this thing. I have ordered more. They're just not here. Shocker, I know. So then I'm going to measure up and put a little mark on both sides of the folded edge. doesn't matter about the other edge because we're going to stitch all of that. So I'm going to put it over this side and it's erasable so it doesn't matter. And then I'm going to do the same to this one. So whatever we do to one, we do to the other. And the reason I'm doing it both sides is because it will be easier later. Right. So now we're going to start at that mark on the folded edge. So I'm going to put my needle in and I'm going to go back through the first hole to lock them in. And then I'm going to stitch down this edge, needle down and pivot, stitch across the bottom, needle down, pivot, and then up the open side. So we're going to close this off. needle down, pivot along the bottom, and then up to the mark that we made. In, back stitch, lock it in. So this is what you should have. And then all the way along. And then trim off those tails. And we're going to do the same to the next one. So again, you're, you're laying it so that all your clips are facing up. In. Back through the first hole. Lock them in. Twist. Along the bottom. Trim off the tails now if they're getting in your way. We're going nice and slowly because precision is key. You want it to look neat. We have to stitch this line again in a minute. Needle down, pivot along the short edge, and then pivot again and come up to the marker line, and then back stitch. Alright, so now we're going to fold this over again. So we're going to squish it together again and this is going to create our rolled handle part. So you can start wherever, as you can tell I like to start like just randomly. And you want to put lots of clips in this. Now if you're on a domestic machine it may not love doing this um, because this is a lot of layers now. And you want to, we're going to start stitching where we stopped here. So I'm just squishing it together. And I'm going to use lots and lots of clips to hold it in place. And you need the clips to face the side that the stitching is. That is also important. Because we're going to stitch back through that stitching, so you kind of want to be able to see it. So we're just squishing together and putting your clip on. Now, if your, mach if your machine is not going to do this, you can either hand stitch it, or you can get your pliers and squish it. Which will make it thinner and therefore potentially easier to sew through. Alright, so you put them on. Squish it like this and then add your clips. It does make it a little bit thinner if that's what you need. Okay. 
So I know that looks like a lot of clips, but it's going to hold it perfectly in place while we top stitch down. So I'm going to remove the first clip and then slide it under. The start's always the hard bit, I have found, because you're trying to line it up. Push them out of the way, squish it down, under we go. Right, so we're going to stitch and then again do that back stitch thing and then go very slowly. Because there's lots of clips and you want to try and go over the original stitching. So you don't want to, you're not in a hurry for this. So I only get like three stitches per clip. And then I have to remove it. But that's okay because it is stitching it together and by going slow and making sure I'm going through those first stitches it's looking very neat so this is the no raw edges version with vinyl. You can do this with um, fabric, but I would definitely interface the fabric with something strong. So I would personally use Hefty if I was going to make them out of fabric. Um, but I stitched through the original line. So even though I've used a rainbow thread and there's multiple colors in the same spot, um, it's still just one line of stitching. My tail got caught there, so I'm just pulling it out and trimming it down. And so now you have a handle. So we're going to do the same to the second one, and then we can get onto the actual bag making part of our day. And again, you want to make sure that you're putting the clips. One way also bends better than the other, I have found. You don't have to do rolled handles on this. You can do flat handles. You can do pre-bought handles. It is entirely up to you. Whoops, just broke that. You can also do like a Tory squish to help get that crease at the halfway point. So you can just fold it in half and then wiggle it that's also helping to make it thinner. So just because I just snapped a clip. So you can do it and then just in opposite directions, push it and that will help crease it so it sits where you want it to. To be fair, these clips are quite old. Some of these clips are like four years old. So the fact that they're breaking is not necessarily a reflection of the bag. It's a reflection of how old they are. I have a couple break every week, so please don't take that as a you can't sew this because my clip broke. They're just old. And like everything, they have an expiry. Alright. So this one is clipped. We're going to do exactly the same as we did for the first one. So you can even Tory squish the start. It might help you to get it under because lining up that first stitch is probably the hardest part. So stitch, stitch, back through the first hole to lock them in. And then slowly 
pull the clips off. And I'm actually watching the needle this time, which is something that I usually discourage, but I'm watching the needle to make sure it's going through the same stitching. Normally we should never watch the needle, but this is one of those rare moments where we need to because we're trying to stitch exactly into that hole. Whoops! See? There goes another one! They are just old. It was bound to happen on camera eventually. It happens off camera all the time. So I've just got to squish that one down because it come off. And then back. Locking in those end stitches. Cutting off the tails and that is your second strap done. It's nice and bendy and you don't need any core. All right, on to the rest of the bag. Let's start with our main center panel. Now, I literally designed the size of this bag so that this would perfectly fit a 5x7 embroidery design. Or at least 5 inches wide. This one's about, this one's roughly a square, so it's not quite as tall as that. So we're going to need our lining and our outer and some zipper tape. So I'm using a black rainbow for this, just because apparently I'm on a rainbow kick today. And you can see that I forgot to melt this. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is take this right sides up and you can clip it if you want to. Um, I usually don't, but we're going to for the video. I should teach you good habits. Like that. Um, and then we can get some scissors and chop off the excess. Uh, it does tell you how much these are, like how long you need, but I just do it like this. And then we're going to clip this into those first clips, like so. And I did center my design, so you can see I've got the crosshairs, it is perfectly in the center. And then with this side, I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to, to make sure that the zipper color flow is going in the same order, I'm going to start at the top and work my way down. Um, if it wasn't a colored tape, you could just start from the bottom and go up, unless you're using metal zippers, because they tend to only open and close one direction. So I'm just clipping the tape to the lining. like so and then I can trim off the excess or you can pre-cut them again entirely up to you and then this is going to clip into this side like this and we're going to stitch down both sides oh see that one just broke too it's not my day for clips maybe I had them sitting in the sun that's definitely not good for them. All right. So back to adjoining stitch length, which for me is two and a half. And I'm going to stitch and back stitch to lock it in. Doesn't matter which side you start with. We're going to do both of them now anyway. And then back stitch. Pull it out. I didn't singe the zip. Trim off the tails, repeat with the other side, and back stitch. So your zip is now attached, and so now we're going to turn it through. Um, so depending on how tough your vinyl is, that might be a little bit more tricky. And then I'm just going to finger press this 
so it sits a little bit flatter for this next section. So I'm going to go back up to a decorative stitch length and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this over so that I just see about an eighth of an inch of the vinyl and then I'm going to stitch in the ditch between the vinyl and the zipper. You just want to see a little bit and what this is doing is this is ensuring that the zip can't be seen from the outside. So you can skip this step if you want to, um, but I'm making sure that the zip is like hidden. So we're just stitching in the ditch between the zipper and the vinyl. And then from the outside, you just get this nice top stitch, but it's pulled that zip back. So now it's not seen because that's kind of my thing that I wanted to do with this bag. So then we're going to do the same to the other side. So we're just going to pull it over just that little bit and then top stitch or stitch right in the ditch between the vinyl and the zip that. and so now from the outside it sits lovely the zip is hidden you can't see, because we didn't do it right on the edge, you can't see the edge of the black zip on the end. And then from this side, you've just got like this little tiny bit down the side here. Now we're going to take one of our main body pieces and we're going to fold it in half to find the center. Because again, I find the center of everything. Like that. Then we get our ruler and our erasable thing, uh, marker. So I'm using my Chaco pen again. And we want to measure. I just had to remember what the measurement was then. Uh, it is written in the pattern. I don't make you guess. I'm making myself guess because I forgot to check. That's my fault. So we're marking all the way down. And this is going to be where the zipper sits. So we're going to unpull the other half of this zipper and we're going to put it face down, lining up with that line like that. And then I'm just going to stitch the zipper down. Trim off the tail. And then I'm going to do the same to this side. So you can stitch top to bottom, bottom to top, it doesn't matter. It's all much of a muchness. And that back stitching won't be seen either. And back stitch. So now our zipper is attached. So it goes on like this. So we're going to take two zipper pulls. And if you're not good with zipper pulls, this might be a little bit tricky for you. But I'm going to put one side in and then the other. Oops, or not, because I pulled it out. That was silly of me. Line it up. And zip it on, making sure it's even, which it is not. So I'm going to undo that and try again. Everything that can go wrong today pretty much is. It's a sign. But that's all right, because then I can show you how to fix literally everything I do wrong. So you want them to be even in the zipper. There we go. Right, so I've zipped it all the way up and now I'm going to crack the zip just a little bit and I want this to stop in the middle. That way it won't be near any seams, but we'll still have it on. And you want to make sure you're going from bottom to top with this. Um, otherwise your zips will be going the wrong direction. 
So the first side's always easier because you've got more movement. The second side can be a little bit more tricky when it wants to. So we're going to zip it on. Oops, missed. What might help is if I even zipper tape up along this edge and singe it so it stops fraying because that's also annoying me. So we're going to put one half on and then the other half on. Maybe, maybe not. Like that. And then we'll crack the bottom and stick it in the middle. Like I said, the second side is always a little bit more tricky, uh, but it's not impossible. Just wiggle the zipper till it goes on. Ta-da! So now we've got two zips that are almost invisible. So I'm going to tack the top and the bottom down so it's flat. Uh, it also helps create a single piece for later. Like so. I'm going to do the same along the top. You just want it to sit nice and flat. Make sure all those tails are out of the way. And make sure that that is within the seam allowance. So now you've got a pocket that goes all the way through. And then you just do it back up again so that they're not in your way. You want to keep these roughly in the center so that they're not seen. So that is that panel done. Next on my table, I have the side panels. So I have decided to go with like a rainbow reflective thing. This is actually in the template patterns. This is piece number 14. Um, but I have decided that it would look cool in this bag. So I have pulled it out and I have got a physical drawing in the patterns. So if you have bought the connector templates, this is number 14. And if not, that's okay too. All right, so I'm going to stick this up along here and this is just going to reinforce my D-ring to make sure that the bag doesn't break. Uh, and this is some stabilizer. So all my leftover bits I cut into strips and squares to use for moments like this. So you want to go all the way up to the top and then down as far as it goes. Then again, because we need to find the center of everything, we're going to do that. This is also going to help us line it up so it's not crooked. So it is important that you do this part because the first time I did these, oh, mine was crooked. So I have learnt from my mistake. So that's the top and the bottom in the center. So now, chaco pen and a ruler, and we're going to draw a line. And this is going to help us make sure that it goes where it's needed. Because the point of this needs to line up in the center. So that's how we do that. Then I am going to go and put a line down like that. And that's where we're going to put the strap connector. So we're going to grab our D-rings. And then I'm going to slot it on here and fold it over like this. And then if you want to, just to help you make sure it stays in the right spot, I'm actually going to put some double-sided tape wonder why that one wasn't open. 
from here down to pretty much the bottom of the strap connector. So when I attach it to here, it's going to help hold it and it's also going to hold this flap down. So now when I fold this down, it's held by the double sided tape and then you can line this up there in the center and then the point of this should also be along the center line. So you can see the line, oh, it's very, very faint, but you can see the line and then the center point lines up with that to make sure that it's perfectly in the middle. Let's repeat that with the other one that I appear to have dropped and then we can top stitch it. What have I done with it now? I just had it. You know what, let's top stitch this one first. So I'm going to start up the top where the um, hardware is. And I'm going to be on a four stitch length. So I'm going to stitch a couple of stitches and then go back through the first hole to lock it in. Needle down and then we're just going to slowly go around the edge. You want to be nice and slow and even with your stitches. And then when you get back to the start, we're going to back stitch. And then trim off those tails. And now it sparkles, which is fun. I'm also going to add rivets. Um, so I'm going to add some down the center. You can add as many as you want. Um, but this one, the top one's the main one because it's going to help hold all of those layers together so that they are extra, extra firm. Um, so I'm going to grab a hole punch and punch a hole right in the center there and then get some rainbow rivets, which are always fun. I'm gonna, you can either stab it from the top or the bottom. So long as you've got double capped rivets, it won't matter which way you go. So on like that. And then we grab the rivet press, which again, you can just switch out if you've got one and push that down. So that has now got extra stability for the D-ring so that you can carry the weight. And there's my other one there. So that's one side done. Second side. So again, we want double sided tape just because it helps hold it in place. Now this is an optional thing. You don't have to use this much tape. I also do try and keep it out of where I'm stitching so that I don't potentially gum up my needle. So again, we're going to fold that down. So it holds like that. And then with our markers, the flat bit's going up to that flat line in the center. And then the point is going to be centered on that line that we drew. Now, because it's chalk, it will just rub away. You can use like a damp cloth and off it goes. But that's where our second one's going. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Make sure the tails are behind me. I'm going to start up near the hardware. Stitch, stitch, and then back through the first one. You can also do back stitching if you prefer. But with how my day is going, I don't think back stitching is really my thing. I feel like it's going to cause me grief, so I'm skipping it. And then down. And then across. Up the other side. Back through the first hole and then do a little back stitch there. Trim off all of the tails and put them in the bin. And then again, we're going to add a rivet to just help carry the weight of this. Because I would hate for your bag to break. So you can do, you do at least one. Um, in my first bag, I did three to make it more decorative. Um, but I don't really want to wreck the rainbowness of this. So I'm just doing the one. 
but that's your choice. You could do it however you like. So I'm just going to squish this down. All right. Um, so now the next step for these is we're going to iron this onto there, uh, but I will do that later. But they will need to be ironed together as one piece, and then you're going to baste the edge so that the edge doesn't lift. And that's your sides done. Let's go on to the lining pieces. So, first up, we're going to do a Tory pocket. Uh, so I have already got mine in half with my rectangle drawn on because I use the Tory Pocket template. So I draw it as I'm cutting it. So we're going to open that up. We're going to find the center because we want our pocket to be centered. It's so much prettier when it's in the middle. And so I'm also going to find the center of this. Now I never interface my Tory Pockets uh, because I don't want them too thick. It's just my personal preference. But you are welcome to do it if you so please. So I'm just going to line this up. I'm going to eyeball how high I want it. There is an official measurement in the pattern, but I'm going to put mine there. Like that. And then we're just going to go back to a normal stitch length and just stitch the long edges. So we're going to stitch and back stitch. When you get to the end, we're going to back stitch. Pivot it all the way around and then just jump to the other side. We will cut that jump stitch later. Back stitch. Stitch along the line and then back stitch again. And trim that jump stitch as well. So you want to trim all your jump stitches. Uh, so this is the section where if you don't want to be using rainbow thread on the bottom, you don't have to be because we won't see the bottom stitches of all the lining pieces. I just do because it's easier, but that's my decision. So I'm just going to fold it in half and make a little snip in the center of the two lines. And then I'm going to cut out towards the edge and then triangle out that end, stopping at the red line that we drew. Triangle one side and the other, like that. And then I'm going to finger press this up so it's flat there. And then we're going to push this through the hole. Now the reason I didn't get up and iron before is because I also want to go and iron this flat. So I'm going to iron that so that the crease is right on the edge. It is sitting pretty well, just finger pressing it, because this fabric is lovely and thick. Um, but I am going to iron it just to make sure that it's super flat and super pretty. So I'm going to iron that, and I'm also going to iron the backs, or the side panels, linings and exteriors together. And then I will be right back to do the next bit. Okay, so that is now ironed beautifully flat. So I'm going to take my accent which this is optional you don't have to put this on but I just think it's pretty and this little rectangle here is going to be for our zipper clip now you guys haven't seen these yet but they're little love hearts and they're like gate clips like mini gate clips so that's what I'm using today so more double-sided tape I know there's a lot in this pattern but it's worth it I promise so I'm gonna stick it more to one side than the other you can also use a skinnier tape if you want. And then I'm going to peel the backing off and fold it in half lengthways. Like this. You want to get it nice and even on that edge. And then I'm going to top stitch down that open edge on a decorative stitch length, which is number four. And then, so instead of back stitching, I'm just going back through the first stitch hole. And then when we get to the end, I can back stitch. Now, whichever end is prettier, 
with your stitching is the end that you want to loop around your um, little clip. So I'm folding mine up. So I'm trying to get to the three inch mark like that. Or you can make it even more. It's entirely up to you how low you want your clip to sit because it's also how far out of the bag it'll come. So now with those lined up, I'm going to stitch back through the same stitching to attach this on. So I'm going to go here, back stitch, and then just stitch down the stitching that's already there, and then back stitch to make it less obvious that it's there. Like that. And so now we've got our little key holders. Now you can use any kind of clip on here. I just, I got the love heart ones because I thought they were adorable. Um, I do have normal ones as well though. But not for the kits. The kits come with the love heart ones because I can, basically. Now I'm going to take my skinnier double sided tape and put it down the long edges of this. Just because I don't want it poking out anywhere. Oops. That goes there, that goes there. Peel off your backing on both pieces. And then I'm going to line this up over the hole like so. Making sure it's all lovely and even. And then we're going to take our little clip and we're just going to tuck it under the corner. So that it will be caught in our top stitching. So that little bit will be a little bit thicker, uh, but it's going to hold the clip. So I'm going to start along this bottom edge. So I'm going to fold the pocket up so that it's not underneath where I'm stitching. Uh, and if you find moving the pocket around too difficult, you can do a facing to do your little hole. Um, other people do it different ways to me, but I like this way less cutting of things. So I'm going to stitch along the outside edge, get to here, I'm going to again pull the pocket out of the way, stitch up to the angle, move the pocket out of the way, needle down, pivot, pull the pocket down, and because I started here, I'm not worried about this moving now. I'm also nearly out of bobbin thread. I can hear it. And then again, push that out of the way. That's another reason why I wanted to iron it. I um, use some steam to really set it. So it doesn't matter that I'm pushing it around like this. It's not going to uh, distort and muck up. muck up my beautiful bag. So now... I've got my little accent, I've got my little gate clip for my keys, and because I steamed that, that still sits beautifully and flat. So, zipper tape, the width of your pocket, chop, and then that the last bit of my zipper will be for the top. I'm going to singe this and learn from my mistakes earlier. Some of them fray quicker than others. Uh, and different batches that I get in fray quicker than others. You can't really tell, so you should always just singe it with a lighter. So I'm just going to move it till it's kind of in the middle. And then I'm going to make sure that it's going to close to the left, because that's what I like. You can make it close to the right, it doesn't actually matter. It's just a thing that I like to try and remember to do. And then I'm going to line up the zip with the edge of the fabric and I'm going to make sure that um, the pull is away from where I'm stitching and I'm going to start this side of the zipper pull. I'm not going to back stitch. I'm just going to stitch around the inner hole now. Needle down, pivot up, needle down. And then when I get back to the zipper pull, I'm now going to zip it the end I've already stitched. 
and it's not going to distort any of my stitches or make the zipper crooked. Needle down, pivot, over the zipper tape. Now if you're using metal zip, uh, don't stitch the actual teeth. Um, you might want to manually maneuver it so you go between them. And then when you get back to the start, back stitch a little bit to lock in both layers of stitching. And then trim off your tails. And so now you've got the zipper in and the rainbow nest going that way. So I'm going to just shake this and your zipper pocket should pretty much perfectly line up because that's how I designed it. And then we're going to pull away the X or the main lining panel and we're going to stitch all the way around the bag. Did I run out of bobbin thread? I think I did. See, I knew it was going to end. So I'm now on my third bobbin. For those that are keeping count of that. I must say, I'm definitely winning bobbin roulette today. All right, so I'm going to pull this out of the way and I'm going to just stitch the pocket closed on all three sides. So come down, needle down, pivot, and then I'm just going to move this part out of the way. Stitch along, needle down, and then pivot up the other side. And so now it should look like this. And that's that panel complete. Now, something that I have done is I'm going to attach the heart to the zipper like this just while I'm making the bag. Because this is so long, I don't want to accidentally get it when I'm putting it in the bag. So that's what we're going to do. And also, while I've got this panel, going to take the lining base and uh, because when I open the bag this is the side that I'll see so this will be the top so I'm going to fold this up and stitch it here because it is a directional fabric it is just something that you want to think about so when I stitch this this will be attached to the back panel that doesn't have our cool zipper pocket and back stitch And so now it goes the same way. We can pop that aside and let's do our next lining piece. So this has got our sunglasses case holder. Now I use, and you don't have to do this, but for the lining of the pocket, I'm using a fleece um, just because it's probably going to help our pocket and our sunglasses from not getting wrecked. So with this, I cut them so that one each way is up the like the patterns up the right way so if you've got a directional pattern just think about that cut one in each direction so i'm going to put them together and i'm going to show the short sides and the v section but not the top and this has got less of a seam allowance than the rest of the pieces this one's only a quarter inch. I mean, you can make it bigger, but you'll just have a very small sunglasses pocket if you do. Needle down, pivot, up the edge, back stitch. I'm going to trim off those tails. Then I'm going to take this, I'm going to make the um, fleece go under the feed dogs to pull it through evenly. And then I'm going to leave a gap at the bottom to turn it through. You can also leave it at the top because we top stitch anyway, but I find the bottom easier to line up our magnet. That's just my personal opinion, so I'm going to leave it there. I mean, you could leave it on any side, really. Stitch along. Down the other side. Needle down. The bigger the gap you leave, the easier it is to turn, but 
potentially the trickier it is to seal that gap. So you can play with that little problem yourself. I'm going to trim off the excess fabric in all the corners so that I get nicer points when I turn it through. Same with this. So I'm cutting more than a 45 degree angle and that way it sits nicer. If you just cut it like that at the 45 degree angle it won't um, sit as nicely. So you need to cut it a little bit deeper and that ensures a more pointy edge. So put all of that in the bin. Turn this through. So these pieces I did interface with a medium woven interfacing. If you want them super stiff, you could also do it with um, Hefty, which is the Violin 1050F. So I'm just going to push the points out because we went through all the effort to make them pointy. Now we need to finish executing that. And then you want to tuck in those raw edges. And that will be our main pocket. Now I can't get mini magnets in rainbow. I still haven't found any. So I'm using silver in the rainbow set and gold in the rose gold set. Until such time as I can find someone that offers them. So now what you want to do is in the center, always with the center. And then we're going to take this and line it up and then mark our two points one and two and then I'm going to put my hand underneath and use my craft knife to cut those little slits I am also for added stability, because I haven't used a thick interfacing, I'm also going to take two small squares of stabilizer, which is the really thick one, and I'm going to add that underneath for added stability. So I'm just going to take this, and it doesn't matter if it's not perfectly in the center of this, it can literally be anywhere. Actually, you kind of want it maybe straight. Probably makes more sense. It doesn't have to be in the center. You also may need to trim this down. And then I'm going to cut the slits here. Now with the craft knife, if you start at the bottom with the blade pointing up, as you push, the further you push in, the bigger the cut becomes. And then on the main panel here, we want to put the female part, which is the thicker part where the actual magnet is. I've got one side in. I'm not sure why the other one's not going. Oh, there we go. And then I'm also going to put the stabilizer on. Then I'm going to put the gasket. So we've got three layers. And then bend the prongs outwards. So you've got three layers. And that's just going to help it be extra strong. And so the magnet won't rip through the fabric. There is interfacing. It's just not super thick. So... I like to be cautious. And then I'm going to fold this over and just add some clips to clip it closed. Like so. This one I'm going to top stitch before I add my magnet. And this, this one, because it's on a point, we will need to trim down our little one inch piece of stabilizer. But I do it once it's in there so that I can see exactly how much I'm chopping. So now I'm just going to top stitch along the outer edge of this one. You can top stitch along the top edge of the other one as well if you want to. down, pivot, up, and back stitch. So now we've got our top stitching. We're going to flip it over, grab our gasket again, and we're going to put it in the center, obviously. Otherwise, your pocket will go on crooked. 
So we're going to cut that. We're going to do this one as well. I'm also just going to kind of make this a weird roundish shape so that the corners aren't pushing my triangle out of shape. It may still need to be smaller. And then we're going to cut these ones as well. And we're going to put the male half in. Push it through. And then I'm just going to kind of turn it inside out. I'm going to put the stabilizer on. I know I cut those holes. Come on like that then the gasket and then push these out as well so you've got the three layers when you turn it through because i've rounded it off see how it's no longer distorting if i had left it the big one inch square it wouldn't actually fit in there but i've cut away enough that that sits nice and flat which was the goal so now we're going to take our lining panel and we're going to find the center because I need to know where that center is which is there and the center of this one is there so I'm just moving the clip and I'm going to line that up and I'm going to top stitch around the three edges so that it becomes a pocket. So I'm going to start here, back stitch, needle down, pivot around. We're stitching that hole closed as we stitch it down, which is why I'm still on my joining stitch length and not something more decorative because I want this to hold. And back stitch when we get up the top, trim down those tails. Like that. Then attach your magnet. And this is going to help you to work out where you need to put your next line. So we need a ruler and the chaco pen. And wherever this sits, I'm going to put the ruler a quarter of an inch down so that this is sitting on the quarter inch line. Uh, there is measurements for this, but this is how I do it. So I just thought you might want to know this little trick. So I'm going to do that and then just swing that out of the way and draw the line like that. Because it's a magnet, it can move like that. And then we can undo it and I'm going to put this on that line and then I'm going to stitch an eighth of an inch from the edge. You want to lock it in so we want a back stitch. Along we go. And then I'm going to trim off those tails, make sure that it's going to sit down in the center. It's very important that we're doing a lot of centering in with this. And then I'm just going to top stitch a quarter inch from the seam and that will hide all of our raw edges on the inside. Like that. Trimming up all of the tails. See, so there's no raw edges showing there. That will now sit down and fit your sunglasses. All right. While I'm on a mission, we're going to take our base. So I've already put my logo in the middle of the base. Anytime we do that, we know I'm gonna use bag feet because otherwise that would sit and soak up nasty things the bag sits in, which we don't want. So I'm going to measure in at the edges like this, and then 
down the sides. Now, if you do the side second, you only have to draw where it intersects with the other line. And those intersecting marks are where our bag feet are going to go. So, we take a hole punch. Punch a hole right over the intersecting part. And then we're going to push the posts up from the bottom. So I can put all four in before I flip it over. And then put my feet on the posts. Like that. That one didn't click in. Now, because these are domed, you always want to make sure that the dome is at the top so that it doesn't get damaged as we squish it down. I'm a little concerned that this one's not going to work, oh, but it did, so we're fine. So our bag feet are now on. We've only got one more piece of hardware in our bowl now. We've just got our top zip. So we're actually going to do that bit now. So we're going to take our lining, one of them, and I attach the lining before I go and attach the handles. Uh, because I worked out the math once the bag is done. And because I don't want the handles getting in the way while I'm trying to stitch it down. So we're going to measure that along there like so. Trim off my excess. Again, you can pre-cut all of these. I just didn't. The small bit can go into my scrap collection of smaller bits of zipper. And then we're going to take, so again, this is the one that I want facing when I open the bag. So I'm going to take my plane and attach it to the zipper one. And then add that into the clips. Like that. So joining stitch length, we're going to stitch along next to the zipper. We're going to stitch and back stitch to lock in the stitches. Wow, did I say the word stitch enough then? And then we're going to back stitch. Trim off those tails, pack up the clips. And now I'm going to pull both sides away from the zip. Remembering that that's our base piece, if you're wondering what's going on there. I'm going to go up to a decorative stitch length of four. And I'm going to top stitch an eighth of an inch from that seam. And we're stitching both the outer and lining of this. Uh, because this helps hold it down away from the zipper so that it's easier to open and close. Like that. I didn't top stitch on my tester bag and I regret that decision. So we're going to top stitch so both layers are now pulled down away from the zipper. And then let's do the other side. Oh, and I need to singe this because I can see it's misbehaving. So again, we're going to line this up along the zipper. You can even put one clip on each end and then work your way to the middle. Because these are all pre-cut, doesn't really matter. One extra one. Now this one's going to be a little bit trickier because it's thicker up the top. So please just keep that in mind, especially for the top stitching. You may wish to cut away some of the excess, which I will show you how to do in a minute after I've stitched it. Okay, so we're going to go under, back to adjoining stitch length. And back stitch. 
trim those tails. Now, this bit up the top here is going to be quite thick to stitch through. So I'm going to take my scissors and just cut out some of that bulk along just where the um, zipper is. So if it's not in the way, it can't distort my stitches for the top stitching. So I've just cut it down so it's got about a very small amount of seam allowance. And then hopefully most of that is now out of the way for this next top stitching. So I'm going to pull it open. I'm going to go up to a four. And I'm going to pull on the bottom as well as the top. And off we go. So here's where it gets really thick, but hopefully you've cut most of it out of the seam now. So it shouldn't be so thick you can't stitch it. Also, keep an eye on your bobbin. Might be finishing up around now. See, that actually wasn't so bad now that I cut the bulk out. Worked out lovely. Alright. Base. We are now going to attach the base. Back to adjoining stitch length. Start at the edge. Back stitch. Again, if you want to, you can use clips. That bit will be thick because, again, the pocket. So just keep that in mind uh, when choosing your fabric. If your machine can't handle too many thick layers, maybe make this one a fabric instead of vinyl. Then we're going to fold this back and top stitch it down because it looks pretty and because it helps keep the bag nice and organized. Back stitch at both ends. I also really like the look of the rainbow thread on this. Now, this one I'm going to clip because as you can see, the shape that it's holding is going to fight me a little bit. And I don't want that. So we're going to add some clips. And then come to the other end and add some clips. And then clip through the middle so it behaves itself. You'll notice that I did the side with the pocket first, otherwise I'd have to fight even more bulk. And then to top stitch this one, because I like to make my life easy. We are going to separate that top zipper, which is why I have not yet put the zipper pull on. See? And now I can get into the bag nice and easy and top stitch. Move the tails out of the way, back stitch to lock it in. And we're making sure that that seam is under where I'm stitching. And then we just have to do the same to the lining. So we're going to bring the lining together like this. So we're just going to have like a big loop. But that's okay. Stitch the lining together. Turn the whole bag out the right way, like this, so that all of that lays on all of there. So now I'm going to go and I'm going to iron this so that the, the bag foam is going to hold on to both layers. I'm going to make sure that all of my side seams match up and then I'm going to iron it down flat so it becomes one piece. And then we will be back to continue. Before we get to ironing, actually, 
we need to attach our handles, which I did almost forget. Uh, so, oops, I am going to use uh, my little thing here to mark my handles. So I want to go half an inch up from the edge, and then I want to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then I want to go up three quarters of an inch, and then up three quarters of an inch, so that I get three markings. So I'm going to do that again. One, two, three. One, two, three. This is why I love this thing so much. So measure along the bottom, up half, and then up three, and three. Same with this one. The second hole, and then up three, and then up three. And that's my magical way of working that out. So now we're going to punch all of those holes. Line it up, squish, squish, squish. And I'm going to do all the holes and all the handles. You want to push it down. So that it makes sure it goes through all the layers. And three. So you do need a lot of rivets for this bag. Okay, so now we're going to take our main panel and a ruler. And I'm going to go there. And then there. And I'm going to measure that marking spot. And I'm going to do the same to all of them. So we go there. And there. Now these measurements are in the pattern, obviously. Why would I leave them out? That would be weird. I'm using something erasable, so don't do this in actual pen. You don't want that. All right, so now I can just line my handle up with those markings, like so. And then I'm going to get an actual pen. Oops. And break the pen. Not quite where I was going with that. So I only marked one spot. Oh my god, that pen's driving me nuts. Let's get a different one. So you can also, um, you don't have to measure it like this. You can measure it the same way that we did with our little template. But I do personally find that easier. Now, to keep track of which one is going to where, I'm going to put a clip on there. So that that side will go with that side, and then this side will go with this side. You don't have to do this because theoretically they are all identical, but on the off chance that they are not, I still like to mark them like this. So now I've got all my markings. I'm going to punch all the holes. Now we don't want to go through the lining, so I'm lifting that up and I'm just going through the exterior of the bag. And then same with this side. And I'm just going to do one side at a time because that's what I like to do. So we're going to grab our rivets and I'm going to push them up from the bottom because I find it easier 
So do it this way. So pushing up from the bottom. I'm going to do both sides. So if you don't have, if you've got some single cap rivets you want to get rid of, now is the time because you won't see the back of the post. Alright, so now that they are up, I'm going to take the handle with the, the matching clip because that's what side that goes on and push up like that. Then I can take the clips away and put caps on all three of those. And that's why I find it easier to push up from the bottom on this particular thing. That is a different size cap. This is what happens when I keep all my stuff together instead of separate. All right, so now I've got them on. I am going to use the rivet setting die to squish them all down. One. Two. And three. So that is one side of the handle on. Now, you want to bring this out and then pivot it around so that you don't get any twists, because we don't want twists. And then we just push that down so that the rivets poke through and then put some caps on. One and two and three. And then same thing again. We're going to squish one. like so and you've now got one very sturdy handle and now we repeat with the other side another thing you can do is you can take a stiletto or sewing awl and stab the holes um, it will do the same thing again I'm gonna mark this and this, just so I know which side goes with what. And it probably doesn't matter, but on the off chance it does, I don't want to make a mistake, so I just, I mark them. We need the hole punch one, not the die setting one. We've got one hole there, and there, and there. So while you can't see that on screen, I can definitely see it in front of me. So the stabbing works quite well. Again, you don't have to do it this way. But that was definitely easier than trying to draw the marks on because they were being stubborn. One, and two, and three. And then grab the posts, and the posts go up from the bottom because it's easier. You need to trust me on this, that it is easier this way. I have tried it both. I try these things for you so that you don't have to guess. One two three and this will be the last of the rivets that you need now you can even flip it over if it's easier to see for you one two and three has the matching thing you also want to make sure that that join is underneath I didn't mention that uh, but I'm gonna mention it now one two and three so it should just push on nicely because we perfectly lined up the holes and in a perfect world they are all purely identical but just on the off chance that you didn't do it like that that is why I suggest that's a small one again. I bought the wrong size rivets for myself. 
So I've got two different sizes in my box of tricks there. All right, so I'm going to squish one side so that there's no pressure. And then we're going to make sure it's straight and bring it around so that there's no twist in your handle. Push it down. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. And then again, one, whoops, make sure that it is actually on your table properly. Two, and three. Now that your handles are on, I'm not going to put that up there, it's too heavy for it. Now that your handles are on, we're going to go and we're going to iron this down so that it becomes one piece. Right, we're ironed, we're cooled down. You don't want to move it when it's hot because it will just unpeel itself. And we're going to close the bag so it's inside out. There is method to my madness, I swear. Just chop off that random thread. Okay. So, move all of that out of my way. It's, none of it is needed now. So, we need to push the handles down. And then, inside out, we're going to put the zipper on. So, I always find it easier to hold it where I can see right ways up because that's just how I put zippers on the best. Uh, but whatever works for you, you need to put the zipper on and zip it all the way closed. Pull it all the way off the edge, like we did earlier. Lots of fancy zipper manoeuvres in this bag. Alright. Zip it completely up like this. Then, the zip closes this way. So I'm going to, where my hand is, I'm actually going to stitch this closed so that it won't come undone in a minute because it's going to try to. So this is the end we're going to seal. And I'm doing that because... I don't need the zipper to keep fighting me. So it's just easy to do that. So now I'm going to crack this end a little bit and I'm going to thread the zip back on. One and two. And again, I'm going to put it roughly in the middle so that it's not near a seam anywhere. Sometimes zips just aren't my friends. All right, so I can already see that I've got a loop. See that loop? That is bad. That is not what we want. It means I have threaded it on incorrectly. So I'm going to take the zip off and try again. And it's the little details like that that matter. So it just means that my zip wasn't totally even when I put it through. Oop. Apparently it's not my Zay for zips, but that's cool. That looks better. So to make sure it's even, we zip it up to where it was. And now I don't have a loop, so I know that we're good. Okay. Now we're going to do some basting. I'm all about the basting because it's going to make this easier. We need to make these edges one piece. And we need to make these one piece. So see how, because the foam doesn't go all the way to the edge, there's this gap. We need to make it one piece so that it's easier to stitch in like five minutes. So I'm going to, right on the edge, stitch it together. That way it can't move and I just ran out of bobbin thread. Okay. Well, that's all right because I am using... Um, binding tape instead of making my own binding so I can actually switch to a binding color so it's not the end of the world that I just run out of thread because this color will match better with the binding anyway and with binding it is nice to kind of hide your stitches in case you miss bits which I'm pretty much guaranteed to do 
and then you have to go over it a second time. So if you can get a colour that matches your binding really well, I highly recommend that. I always just tie my old thread onto my new thread and pull it through everywhere except the needle because you don't pull the knot through the needle, you will snap your needle or you'll bend it and then you'll wreck your machine. So either way, it's not a good plan. Now this is a pretty full bobbin, so I know this is going to work. But again, we just need to sew around the edge. And I'm doing it well within the seam allowance. So I'm trying to do it as close to the edge as I can. And so now that is one piece. So when I stitch that, nothing's going to come out and annoy me, which is exactly what we need. You don't absolutely have to do this, but I do highly recommend it. I always do it. I'm not just doing it for you guys because one piece is easier to work with than two. And in this case, it would be four pieces instead of two. So now I'm going to stitch all the way around this end, closing this loop up as well. You may need to clip this so it sits where it's meant to because the lining should be the same size as the exterior. So we need to kind of clip it in place so it behaves itself. And you'd be surprised at how much it doesn't want to behave itself, which is why I'm clipping it. Even though we've ironed it, again, I didn't put any of the foam in the seam allowance to make it easier for you guys to sew. Uh, but that also means that it's not joined where there's no foam, which is why I'm clipping it. I'm going to clip both ends and then I can just quickly sew them. So I'm lining up the base first, just because you've got to start somewhere and I always seem to want to start in the middle of things. Ah! Missed that. Line that up. Now I know it doesn't look like it fits and it's all bowing, but it does because they're the same size. It's just fighting, like the, the handles are pulling it and the foam's pulling it and so it looks like it doesn't fit, but it does. You just need to trust me on that. And the more clips you add, the more you realise that I am correct. And it does fit. It's just being stubborn. And sometimes these things just can't be helped. Yes, I did just pull away that foam. I can iron it back when we're finished. But it wasn't even. Because again trying to fight me it does fit though once I've clipped it see how it fits fine it's just it's just the bag so I'm going to stitch all the way around including over the zipper of both ends I know we've already sealed one but it's just easy to sew in a circle we're doing this right on the edge we don't want to be able to see these stitches later this is just purely to hold it in place to make my life easier when we attach our ends because we're using binding. Keep pulling it around and stitching. So that's one end. And it's now one piece, right? So now I'm just working with one piece instead of the two. So the clips will hold it in place and then we just stitch around. Now you don't have to do this, but it is highly recommended. 
but if you're trying to conserve thread, you may just want to use a real lot of clips to clip the edges together. That is entirely your choice. Bring it around. And back to the start. I don't even bother back stitching. I just went over a couple of stitches. It'll be fine. So, this is now what we've got. It's not sitting at all like it's meant to, but just, it's fine. Taking our ends. We found the center earlier, so that lines up with the center of the zipper. Like so. And then we're going to add a lot, a lot of clips. And you want your clips to face the end piece. So I'm going to put three... Four, I'm going to put five clips at the top to hold that where I want it. Then I'm going to come and there's the center and then you can find the center of here of the bottom of the bag and we're going to line that up. Does that look like the center? It does. So then we're going to add a lot of clips to the bottom here. So I'm adding five again. Now I know it doesn't look like it fits right? It's a little skew if. I promise it does. So we are now going to work. I like to work from the top down, but you can work from the bottom up, doesn't matter. But we're going to add a lot of clips to hold everything in place. Like that. And see, just like that, that half fits perfectly. Then we're going to repeat with the other side. Now, the seam allowance is half an inch, but I'm going to stitch like one stitch out from half an inch uh, so that I won't see these stitches when I put the binding on because the binding sits at half inch. So this is kind of like another almost basting. So you want to do like just shy of half inch, like one stitch length. So we're doing half inch, but like not. I know that doesn't really make sense. And this is why we stitch that zip, because I'm going to put pressure on this and I don't want it to buckle. So we're on a joining stitch length and I'm going to go to the half inch line and then literally just move back the equivalent of one stitch length so that you won't see this. And we're going to stitch and back stitch and I'm starting on the bottom straight part because I personally find that easier. You can start wherever makes you happy though. Choice is yours. I'm going to clean up the clips as I go. And we're going to just go around the bag. And we're just pushing that bag around as we go. Some bits are easier and some bits are harder. I'm also nearly back to the start, so I'm going to trim off the tails so that they're out of my way. And then I'm going to continue to push the bag and flatten it for the stitching part that we're trying to do. And then back stitch. So now that I've stitched it, I want to have a look in the bag to make sure that I haven't missed anywhere. And I've got a little bit of a, um, a pinch here. And sometimes that will happen. So I just need to unstitch the pinch and then like an inch the other way so that I can smooth it out so we don't have a pinch. So I'm just going to trim those stitches and there's my pinch there. So I'm just going to flatten it back out and I'm going to stitch it from the other direction. So I'm going to squish it down like this and try and do it this way. And hopefully this will counteract any pinch that I'm going to get. that. 
It is easier to stitch it from the other way, but when I'm dealing with pinches, I like to go in the opposite way so I don't just have a repeat of what I just did. Okay, so now I'm happy. I'm going to add in the other end. So you can start from the top or the bottom. It actually doesn't matter. So long as you're starting from the center of the panel. There, there and there. And then I'm going to lift this up and line up the center. You also might want to push the D-ring down so it's out of your way. Nobody likes a D-ring in the way. And then we're just going to work our way down and around. The more clips the better because it will hold everything perfectly in place for you. You can work your way bottom to top or top to bottom. It doesn't matter. So long as you're using a lot of clips. Like they almost want to touch each other. And that way you know it's going to hold exactly where you want. It doesn't matter. Look, look how many clips I'm using. I'm using a lot. Another option is I know some people like to staple it so that it holds. As long as your staples are within the seam allowance so that you don't accidentally stitch them. But I have a lot of clips. They're all pretty close. But that should help prevent the pinching that I had the first time because I didn't use as many clips. So I'm going to start, I'm going to start here because this looks like an easy entrance. And we're going to go just slightly less than half an inch. Needle down, readjust the bag. Take off that clip. Bring the bag around. Now how difficult this is will depend on what fabrics you've used and how good you are at going around curves. But I highly recommend you clean up your clips as you go because a cleaner area is easier to stitch. I'm just going to do a little back stitch there. Now don't open your bag all the way. You just want to be able to check it from this side. You can kind of feel pinches anyway. I'm quite happy with that. I know the bag still doesn't look like it's sitting the way it should. That's the handles on the inside. So the first thing I'm now going to do is I'm just going to trim a little bit off where the zipper is at the top so that it doesn't become too bulky because we don't want that because I'm about to put the binding around it. And then just anywhere where it looks like it slipped or anywhere you've got extra vinyl because of the curve that we did, you just want to trim that off so that we're going to get a nice even binding. Like that. Now, in the pattern I use the same fabric as the binding, uh, but for this one I am going to use... The binding that I just have to fold in half. So with fabric you want to do a double fold binding or like a bias binding. You can buy it pre-made. This is from Vardman Threads. So I'm just going to, in this there's five lines. So obviously the middle one is the halfway point. So I'm going to fold it over and add a lot of clips and clip it in place. So if you're folding it on that fold, you should then be catching both halves as we stitch around. Now I still will be using about as many clips as I did the first time. Because I don't want the binding to shift. And this should cover all of the stitches that we've done. Because this is the half inch point. And because we did one stitch less than half inch, you shouldn't see your stitches while you're doing this. That is the ultimate goal. 
If you can, it's probably not the end of the world. You can just trim off some of your seam allowance to be able to hide them. So I'm just clipping around. Now because I can just melt this, I don't have to tuck under the raw end of this part. So I can just make sure it overlaps a little bit, cut it and then seal it with a lighter. But I'm covering all the raw edges. You need as many clips as you need. There's no right or wrong amount. You might want more than me. Depending on your machine and how easily things maneuver, you may need more clips than me or you may need less. Or if you've got a binding tool, you can definitely use that too. Um, if I wasn't doing a tutorial, I'd switch over to the cylinder arm because it's got the binding foot. And that would do all of this work for me without any clips. But, as cool as that is, that's not going to teach you how to do it. So we're not doing that. I'm also going to melt this end, now that I think about it. Okay, so we're going to just do exactly the same as we just did. And just stitch around it again. So you want to go like one stitch in from the very edge of the binding. Or about an eighth of an inch. And that should stitch everything down for you. I know you can't really see, but there's not really an angle that I can do that's going to be super helpful for this. The sides, you can go a bit faster because they're almost, they're, while they're not straight, they feel a lot straighter than like the corner curves. So they are easier to stitch. You can see me pulling the bag around as I'm going. You also want to make sure you're not running out of bobbin thread. I know I've said it a lot during this, but you really don't want to. What? All right, last corner. So again, you want to be pulling the bag around that curve. And then when you get back to the start, we're going to backstitch. And then we're going to check for all the places that I missed. <gasps> Which is nowhere. That never happens. I always miss at least one spot. See? Perks of going slow. So now we're going to do the same on this end. Halfway, clip it down. You could also put vinyl on this if your machine can handle that kind of thickness. Uh, mine probably couldn't if I'm honest. And the binding tool can't have vinyl go through it, it's too thick. So I always just use webbing binding. This is a polyester binding. Works for what I want to do. Um, but in some bags I do put, like if the pattern's really really busy, I will still put the same fabric as the binding. I just make it a double fold binding. Uh, and if I'm making it out of quilting cotton, I will cut it straight. But if it's a poplin like this was, I would have had to cut it on the angle. I actually don't think I had enough to do that. That's why we're doing this. Because otherwise you don't get the give around the curves. You need that 45 degree bias stretch. So if you're making it out of poplin, please make sure you cut it on the angle. Otherwise your binding is going to like crinkle up. Which just won't look as neat. It's not the end of the world, but it won't look as neat. 
Whereas this stuff is literally made to do what I'm doing with it. And I got it from Vibe and Threads. I think I already told you that. Alright, so I'm going to cut just a little bit past where we started so it hides the join. And then you want to melt that end. You want to try and use the blue part of the flame so it doesn't discolour, especially if you're using a white binding. You don't suddenly want to have black bits on the end. I'm going to pack this up because I like to try and keep my space relatively clean. And then lift up the clip and add it in. And I'm going to add an extra one for good measure. So now I've got lots and lots of clips again. You notice now that I've put the clips, it is starting to sit a bit nicer. When we turn the bag through the right way, it will sit even better because it's not fighting the handles on the inside. So that's just something else to think about. All right, so I'm going to start on the flat bit at the bottom. I could have also started on the side. It doesn't actually matter. And you'll see with this hand, I'm pulling it around to help ease it. I, don't, I know it's not a circle, but it's kind of a circle. It's like a weird oval shape. So you want to bring the bag around into it. You're going to make sure you pull off the clips. Needle down. And then again, we're going to go around. And cutting that little bit of zipper tape off the top has really helped. Um, because zipper tape is slightly bulkier than fabric. Check on your bobbin again. Honestly, there's nothing worse. Final curve. And back to the start and back stitch. Now, you instantly turn it around to see where I missed. Now, I think I did pretty well that time. I have been going a lot slower, so I haven't missed anywhere. So that is technically the bag done. To finish it off, you want to open this up. Then we can crack the zip all the way along like that. And the first thing you want to do is pull out your handles so that they're not obstructing the bag. And then I'm going to push a corner through with like a fist so that I don't hurt myself. And then pull the bag out. And then I'm going to do the same to the other end. You just kind of want to turn it in on itself and then push all of that ending out like that. Let's see. And then same to the other end and then we're going to Tory squish the whole thing. Otherwise it won't sit as nice. So you want to roll it in your fingers and then squish it. Now another thing that you can do is add piping into that. Uh, but just be careful of how many layers your machine will handle. But piping in there would help this to sit out nicely as well. So we've got to squish it. Otherwise it won't sit as nicely. Especially up at the top here. I'll just do one end to prove a point. And then you just need to add your strap to the sides and voila one finished bag we also need to tory squish the bottom so that it sits nice and flat especially here so we are going to tory squish right there as well but that is your Temptress bag done. You can also zip these all the way up now because we don't need to worry about being in a seam like that. 
there you go guys one temptress bag and then the inside sits lovely because we've already ironed it in place and then you just zip her up i hope that was helpful um i hope you take at least one of the techniques learned today and apply it to something awesome whether it's this bag or not uh and thank you for joining me bye guys <laughs>